Okay, hello, this is Andy Sander with the cold. Um, so I'm just going to update this modular uh, building asset video because I believe the other one was a bit out of date and confusing. So um, I'm going to give you the link to the uh, modular assets. Um, so I'll give you all of these photographs I've taken around York. You can, of course, use your own. Um, I just walked out of the university using my legs and then took photographs of various buildings. So uh, I've also got this picture here of, uh, of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And really, I just wanted to show you um, the modular structure of the levels particularly within Syndicate, it's quite obvious you can see here that these are modular sections. What I'll do is I'll just pop over to Photoshop. So if we look uh, in Photoshop, so these are modular sections, these are modular sections, this is a modular section. So they're putting it in stories. So for instance, I could, uh, I could replace this modular section. The actual modular section I'll show you is um, Let's just have a quick look. So the actual modular section here is that section there. So I could effectively replace uh, this modular section here with this modular section here. Although obviously this would look a bit weird because then you'd have a kind of outsized window or an off-sized window on the second floor. So uh, again, you know, you could you can see up here that they've actually done that. Um, we've got a small window. Uh, uh, adjoining a, um, a normal sized modular section. So this is just kind of, kind of show you how it's used in games and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take, uh, this is a very similar kind of section here uh, that I've taken from the photographs that I have delivered onto the Google Drive. So I'm going to try and build this into four modular sections. Okay. So I'm going to work on, on this section here and cut it into four sections. So we'll have section one, section two. So section one and section two will be interchangeable as a modular section should be. I should point out that section three and section four, you couldn't really interchange this these doors with the top floor, although I'll try and make it possible. But um, mod, you've got to kind of use your common sense with modular building assets, as in you're not going to want to put a, a set of doors on a second floor, although sometimes the situation will arise where you need to. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a template block. Um, and so this is something that I can use as a, a core wraparoundable block that um, we can, basically I'm going to do it and then I'll show you. Okay, so I need to make my wraparoundable template texture. So um, you want to look for the easiest job available to save yourself time. Uh, so this, we've got some nice bricks here, but I can see that some of these are slightly angled, whereas these on this side look to be a little bit better to me. I could be wrong, but let's try this. Um, so I'm just going to copy that. You'll note that I've uh, turned on this little app that shows you the keys I'm pressing in case you're getting confused. So uh, I've copied that, so let's just go to new, create a new canvas, paste that down. So I can already see that, um, that we need to basically, I've just gone to distort there. Uh, and I'm just trying to straighten those bricks out. Uh, okay, so let's just apply that. There is a perspective tool. I never tend to use it because I tend to do it by eye. Uh, so, cheating again, let's just copy this across. Uh, and I'll try and flip it. Okay. So, you can use the, the cursor keys or the arrow keys to just move it into position. So I'm just going to create a, a straight row of bricks without a visible seam. So we have got a visible seam here. So a good trick for getting rid of visible seams uh, that I've been using for many centuries is uh, just to kind of grab um, a set of bricks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this to stamp 
over the seam okay see what I'm doing so then just so that we hide the seam again I'll just flip that uh, there's the seam so I'm not taking as much time as I normally would um, you know this is well and that's actually not particularly good so let's just adjust that to get it in line so you know it does take a bit of time to fiddle about uh, and make sure that there's nothing too obvious um, I mean we can s I'm, s I'm not particularly happy with that section there but for the purposes of this exercise uh, I mean the other way that we can fix that is to go onto the rubber stamp tool and then we can get a bit of seam um, and then we can start stamping this sort of thing I'm getting rid of the obvious seam um, you know there's something funny going on here visually we can see that I think it's because we've got um, bricks here that are very short so uh, let's just so you know you can use those two tools you can use cut and paste and you can also use the rubber stamp tool to make it look at least partially normal um, so then I'm going to cut I'm going to um, crop this down let's just crop that down to that size so it's kind of okay we can see that there's pretty much horizontal lines going across the brickwork so let's progress and move on from here so one of the most useful tools in, I'm just going to flatten this so it's just one layer, one of the most useful tools uh, in Photoshop, uh, I don't know how well known this is outside of game development but um, it used to, we used to use it all the time. So uh, filter other offset. So really what this does is you can choose to move, so what this is doing basically is moving the edge of the image uh, along in the horizontal plane or obviously in the vertical plane if you'd like to move that as well so using this tool we can see where the seams are so now if we have a look here there's a big seam obvious seam here and there's a big obvious seam here so I'm just going to get rid of these quickly again you take a lot more time doing this um, so quick way of getting rid of that seam so I'm taking a nice clear row of bricks paste that in uh, and you'd be surprised at how much the human eye will recognise patterns. So, you know, if you move this row too close to this row, then you probably go, oh, look, that's the same set of bricks. Quite weird, but um, you'll see it in a lot of badly made games where you suddenly spot the um, texture uh, repeating. Well, it used to happen a lot anyway, but not so much these days. Uh, okay, so let's just do my old um, trick again again you would take a lot more time than this so just drag that across uh, and put it in somewhere that doesn't look too ridiculous okay so now that's we've got a bit of a ropey seam here I might just get rid of that using that uh, so we want the opacity up and we want the brush size down so and then what we'll do is uh, I'll try to get rid of this horrible seam not quite as easy as a hut I might just grab a nice piece of masonry up here stick that in so again that isn't really going to work because obviously the bricks are different sizes but uh, that's actually less obvious than this weird line so now if we go back to filter other offset uh, and then we just minus out the values we had in before to get it back to the original position so this is all fine and then if we just try moving it horizontal and vertical to look for seams there is a seam here but let's just for the purposes of this exercise ignore that uh, okay so and make sure when you're resetting it that you get um, let me just so 25 pixels down 20, 20 pixels down so what I'm doing here is I want to make sure I've got masonry at the top and masonry at the bottom um, so that these will wrap nicely 
Okay, so uh, that's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that. Let me just check. Always check that it's flattened. Okay, I'm going to save that as brick template. Okay, and we'll continue. So what you'll see now is that um, I can use this. Uh, I've just copied my brick template into a new canvas. So we can now use this. Let's close down uh, Mr. Assassin's Creed. Goodbye. No, I don't want to save. Thanks. Brain not working. No, oh, goodbye. Uh, okay, so I'll show you now why I've created this brick template because now what we can do is uh, I can take, you'll notice the brickwork is arched above the window, so I'll cut it here. In fact, I'll probably just get a polygonal lasso tool and then I'll drag that along. Uh, it, I think we are slightly in perspective here so it, it's narrowing towards the top of the window uh, and so in my untitled canvas with my uh, wraparoundable brick texture I can then paste that in so so basically uh, that you know that's a bit rough but um, so if we go to the eraser tool and then make sure the flow isn't too crazy and then what we can do here is we can just just merge it in basically uh, so we've got some crazy brickwork going on down the side here so again it's just a case of fooling the, the human eye kind of trying to delete the patterns out um, so I could take that right up to the window if I wanted so you can see this looks stunted up the top I mean I might just take this layer and distort it slightly so that we're getting it a bit more square so that looks a little bit more normal uh, we do have some weird shadows around here so I might just try and cut these off you'll note that I'm on a on the top layer here what I've pasted into so I might just delete that so you don't really want shadows uh, within your textures although that actually looks weirder with the shadow cut off. Okay, so let's just call this, uh, let's call this, uh, so it's because it's a seven as a PSD because I haven't flattened it, flatten image. So let's go save as, and then let's go brick template with window. Okay, so you can build up a library of uh, of textures uh, that will become your modular pieces. Okay, uh, so I'll just have a look at what else we've got on our template. So I mean, it is it is nice to, to have some little little extrusions to give it some depth. Okay, and don't be afraid of cutting uh, window frames out of um, of other sections of buildings because I don't. You don't tend to really notice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a. I want to copy this again. Make a new canvas. Create. Okay. Uh, so let's just flatten that. To start with. So if we go back to here, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just grab all of. Uh, I might combine. Well, let's just have this. In fact, let's have this one. Well change my mind again it's because this one actually looks like an alarm while well, that looks like a piece of a cube of butter okay so uh, back onto here let's go paste it in so I might just scale that a bit to make it a little bit more obvious but always watch the scaling you know that you don't suddenly have crazy sized bricks you know we all kind of understand um, from our day-to-day -day lives that bricks are a particular size uh, let me just rub out some of that nonsense to fade it a bit okay beautiful Andy well done uh, filter uh, sharpen so that just sharpens up the text again a little bit more uh, and let's go and nick that window so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut around it so I don't get any of the 
off colour bricks. I say off colour, different coloured. The person who owns that house probably thinks the bricks are lovely. Uh, I just want to copy it really so I can see what it fits into the scene. So, uh, yeah, paste that in, and then this one obviously is distorted, so let's just transform, distort that back. Uh, so, again, it's looking quite unpleasant, but again, this is just a test. So you can, you know, it's quite useful using bricks because you can use the bricks to guide the lines uh, to make sure things are kind of square. So let's just sharpen that again. Sharpen, sharpen, okay. Let's just look how smelly it looks. It looks okay. So let's just flatten that. So let's save as uh, with template one. Okay. So, and then next up, what I'm going to do is I am just going to. I'm just going to cut these two modular sections out uh, and these are going to be kind of standalone so I'm just going to cut them out and then see what I'm going to do with them. Okay so this is this this bottom section is nice because we've got some nice uh, we can extrude uh, this this door in but bear in mind that um, unless we actually uh, fully UV map this uh, unwrap this properly um, this is really just kind of a background scenery because if we're putting a planar map on this, it'll, you'll see stretch textures here. So this is the kind of thing that you'd have uh, in the background that the player couldn't really get to. So, you know, in a driving game, something like that. Um, so I'm just going to cut these out. So really what we want to do is, this is, this is flat. We want to get the flat section. Uh, and we can dodge that. We want to get the flat section. Uh, again, here we're going to use this tool because we've got perspective issues. So that's the flat part. Okay, so I'm just going to actually. Okay, I was going to cut it, but it sometimes causes issues when you uh, if. I'll just quickly show you that if if I was to cut this out, then we're going to get this white colour here is going to try and anti-alias to this red colour, and then we may end up with a red seam down our texture. So uh, let's just go backwards. So we can see here that uh, we need to kind of straighten this up. So we're back to our distort. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure this this line here is horizontal, which it isn't. Okay, so that's about right. So we'll note there's uh, a gap down the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop this in. I mean, yeah, again, you want to straighten this up using distort or even the perspective tool, and certainly this line here. But for the purposes of this exercise. So, uh, so the, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So we can leave that, and let's go back to our image again, and then let's take. I'm just going to get try and get this window, uh, this window seam again. Window seam, window frame. Uh, um, we can pull this right the way across here, and then we can get hold of this. Okay, so uh, so what you'll note here, so this isn't square, and we're going to want all of our um, we're going to want all of our textures really to be kind of as square as possible. So let me just sort this out again with the old distort. Uh, okay. snapping which is a bit irritating but um, you can turn that off so 
Yeah, it's okay. I am going to turn that off in a minute. Right, so here's just a little tip that, um, so let's just flatten that. So let's have a look at uh, image size. So your image size is uh, 896 by 1091. So if we take off the lock and then just put that in at 1000, you'll notice that things like doors, you can quite easily get away with uh, stretching them without really noticing any difference but that means we've got a, we've got a better uh, a squarer texture uh, so we've now I'll just save these out um, let me just make sure these two are aligned so what I'll do is uh, let's flatten the image there and then image canvas size so the canvas size here means I can anchor this this image to this side of the uh, the canvas and I'll stretch it this way You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, even though I'm confusing myself. Okay, so I'm going to make it 2000, uh, extend it to 2000 width, and I'm going to anchor this image to the left hand side of the new canvas size. So there we are, and it's given me red because uh, I've set my um, I've set my default colours, the background is red, which can make all issues with anti-aliasing as mentioned before, but without boring myself to death, I'm going to quickly cut this out, uh, and then let's just paste it in here, I just want to see if these two fit together, so if we extend this, so it's the same size, so if you hold down shift, uh, it'll constrain uh, the scaling proportions as in it'll scale it in the X and the Y uh, the same amount. Okay, so yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So we've got two layers now, so what I'll do is I shall cut this layer off again. And then what I'll do is I'll make a new canvas because I'm crazy like that. Okay, so that's the correct size. Let's just close that one down. Uh, let's get this one back to crop it back. Uh, see, we have got a red line there. Stupid Photoshop. Okay, right, all should be well. So, next step is to build uh, a facade in Maya.